Good morning out there, wrestling fans around the world. Welcome to Around the Blocks. That's with three X's with Mike Knox, because I spell my name with three X's, right? Pretty clever, right? Just like last night's WWE Fast Lane. And we is now approaching the road. Well, that's a lie. We are physically on the yellow brick road to wrestle. Mania, people, welcome. Make sure you go out there and follow me on wherever social media is sold, which is absolutely free. If you're here on Facebook, you already know who you're talking to. But if you have a Instagram, you have a Twitter, you have whatever all those things that people have, make sure you follow me at Mike Knox. I already told you how to spell it with three X's. People, listen, WWE's Fast Lane, it wasn't so bad. Now, people have to understand here things, people. Wrestling is storyline. So because Wrestling is storyline. You have to know how to follow a story. And the one thing that WWE does very well is, well, follow the story. And the story last night was told simply in one way. Now, before we go into the stories that were told and unfolded in a way that, personally, no one thought was coming. I'm just being honest. Wait, it was a pay-per-view that even my son said certain people were going to win, and I get into that momentarily. He's 10 years old, and he's a better uh he has a better intelligent wrestling mind than most of you guys out there. But um, first, let me just go ahead and tell you the winners. We had the kickoff show, which, come on, who really cares about it? But in case you I, in case you are a fan of the perfect 10, which I'm just being honest, guys, nothing against the guy personally. I just don't see the the the, the, the hoopla about one Ty Dillinger. Just, I'm just not a fan. I don't see it. Uh, Dice Man uh, actually said that he <laughs> What, was the, what did he compare him to? It was so funny. I, I can't remember the name. That's how funny it was is that I can't remember the name, right? So how funny was it? But it was funny to me. When you're drinking and you're watching Fast Lanes, it was funny. But Ty Dillinger, Brazongo defeated Mojo Riley, Chab Gable, and Sheldon Benjamin via pinfall. And then the match opened up. Who thought they would open up with Sinsuke Nakamura? Sinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev. Rusev loses via pinfall to Shinsuke Nakamura. We get into that match momentarily as well. Then we have the United States title. Well, becoming a Grand Slam champion was Randy Orton defeating Bobby Roode. Get into that momentarily as well as the internet was set ablaze. But what else is new when the WWE has a pay-per-view on and fans don't get their way? They bitch on the internet. Then we had um, a backstage vignette between uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. We'll talk about that as well. Then we had Natalia and Carmella versus Becky Lynch and Naomi. Now, i got to be honest with you guys. At this point, and I'm not disrespecting the women, I, it's, it's daylight saving time. Those who are fans of me on Facebook and those who are listening now on YouTube and everywhere else, I, you know, one of my gigs, I'm a bus driver. My bus caught fire, plus it was daylight savings time. I was kind of worn out, and plus I was drinking. I dozed off on this match. Matter of fact, when I woke up, my entire living room was sleep on this match, taking nothing from Natalia, Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Naomi. But Carmella and, 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 and Naomi wins that match. Then we had the tag team match between the Usos and the New Day. We'll talk about how that match ended in momentarily as well. Then we had, after that, we had the six-pack champ. No, we had the women's title match between Charlotte Flair and Ruby Wyatt, which we knew was going to happen. Charlotte Flair wins, but we got to talk about what happened after that. And then we had the six-pack challenge, which... AJ Styles won that match, and we we're going to talk about that as well. But let's take it back from the top to the bottom. The top to the bottom, we're here. Let's just go ahead and dive into this pay per view. Overall, this was not a bad production by the WWE, and I'm starting to get a sense of a pattern, right? If you will, so to speak. Not you know, not the pattern that grandma would stitch up for you back in the day when you had a grandma, because nowadays grandmas are like 40 years old and. I, no disrespect towards a grandmother out there who has a grandchild, but if you're 40, you're not the kind of grandmother I'm talking about. My grandmother was old. Your grandmother was old. You know how you know your grandmother was old? Because she spent her whole life in the kitchen frying chicken. She spent her whole life in the kitchen cooking, baking. And then when she wasn't baking, she was sewing and watching Price is Right and, 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 and Young and the Restless while drinking coffee. That's a grandma, okay? Shout out to my grandmother in heaven, okay? That's a grandma. But um, this match was, this pay-per-view, the pattern that's being set here, blah, 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 is that these B-level pay-per-views are no longer B-level. You look at them on paper, every time you go, I don't want to watch this. This is, I know what's going to happen. I don't want to see it. But in turn, actually, if you take the opportunity, which, okay, I get Sunday. You had The Walking Dead on. When I get done, I'm going to go watch The Walking Dead, okay? I, I can't lie. But for me, nothing trumps wrestling. Only thing that trumps wrestling for me is that if my Philadelphia Eagles, I'm sorry, 
how disrespectful can I be? The Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles are on Monday Night Football. Other than that, or Sunday Night Football, there's maybe other than that, I watch wrestling over anything else. But I will go back and watch The Walking Dead. So unless you're a big Walking Dead fan and you can't miss it because you don't have a DVR or access to getting it after the pay-per-view goes off, you're going to watch wrestling if you're a wrestling fan. So when wrestling was on last night and you watched this pay-per-view and you sit back and you wasn't excited, but you still ordered pizza for it nevertheless, it was actually pretty good. It was not bad. Why wasn't it bad? Simply because it's the road to WrestleMania, people. I mean, despite, you know, it being the final stop in 27 days now, as I will be there, um, and they built this to be, you know, this pay-per-view, you can describe it as unforgettable, but you can't because it actually was a good card actual. It was packed with, with, with multiple reveals of where we're going to go here in the future. And where we're going to go is I'm going to start – with um, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev. I'm going to go in order, although I'm going to, I know I, I don't want to because I want to go to the end and, and the biggest things of the night, but I'm going to go in order because when this match was booked last week, everybody complained. Everybody had something to say about, oh, this is bad booking, putting Rusev in there against Shinsuke Nakamura because the crowd's going to be all Rusev day and they're not going to be, you know, Shinsuke's in a bad position. Speaking of Rusev Day, speaking of Aiden English, I will have Aiden English's uh, future mother-in-law on the Soul and Sports slash Perfect Plex Radio today at 5 o'clock, Blog Talk Radio, Fox Sports Radio. We have, excuse me! Excuse! Vicky Guerrero will be joining the program today, so make sure you guys check it out. But back to this match, cheap pop, but it's not because I pay for it, okay? So I can promote anything I want to promote. But half the crowd screaming Rusev Day, the other crowd is screaming Nakamura. And, and this is what I liked about this, is that the fans decided to not bury Nakamura in this match. And that's, to me, what made this match become watchable because let's be real fans can ruin a wrestling match if fans are booing something or overly putting over one other wrestler over the other guy then the match becomes you know it's not as important it takes away the luster it takes away the excitement if you will so to speak of watching this match and they didn't do that okay and they wouldn't let that happen so they let nakamura get over they let rusev get over and it, guess what guys this match went for about 17, 18, 19, 20 minutes, and no one was bored in this match. My kids were entertained. I was entertained. Listen, my wife, although because I almost died in a, a burning blaze at a bus yesterday, she even sat there and watched the whole pay-per-view. This was very entertaining, guys. The reason why she couldn't record my kids because when Nakamura comes out, his entrance, for some reason, my sons, when they, they, they want to be wrestlers. My daughter does too, but like the pole, I won't let her become a professional wrestler because a friend of mine, Mr. Phil Bailey, tells me that that was the old wrestling, that women had one job in the business, and that was to keep the boys in the back busy. However, that has changed with the women's revolution, but I still don't want my daughter being a professional wrestler. Sorry. She has to be something else. But my sons like to walk around and got darn underpants. That's their... their <laughs> Moving on. So, but the match was actually pretty good, guys. Shinsuke Nakamura, Rusev. Rusev wins this match uh, by pinfall. You know, he is the winner of the Royal Rumble. This is what we all want to see him get a chance to go against AJ Styles. The question is, did AJ Styles later on live up to his end of the barking? Well, spoiler alert. Duh. Okay, we're talking about that match momentarily as well. That match, honestly, yo, I, that match was awesome. On a scale of, you know, my my my, my Ralphie um, A plus 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 from the Christmas story, it's about a B. It was a really really good match. It had some really good false finishes. The kickouts. It, it, it was. I actually enjoyed this match an awful lot. I cannot lie. Then we had the United States Championship match, and this is where people do what they do best: complain and bitch and moan on the internet. Why? Why do you continue to complain and moan on the internet? I don't understand it. I don't get it. Can someone please help me out? I don't understand it. I, I, I need you to explain it to me more about why you still complain when things don't go your way. Randy Orton wins this match. He becomes the new United States champion. He is now a Grand Slam champion. How was that a bad thing? You know, and, and my one guy, shout out to Pure Gold, you know, 
to each, this is what I love about wrestling fans, to be honest. We all have what we like. We all like who we like. We don't like who we don't like. He openly admitted he hates Randy Orton and always has. Well, for you, then that would suck. If you're a Bobby Roode fan and, and you don't like Randy Orton, I can see why that would suck for you. DJ and myself, Dice Man, we got into a heavy debate about this because it was, you know, I always watch wrestling with my kids. I'm on the Xbox headset with DJ. We have a great time that way. And we're watching this and I'm telling him what's going on in the conversations on the internet. And he's like, well, God, come on, Mike, you can't always go back and forth. And I had to break it down for him. And that's just being honest with you guys. I do have guys that I like more than others. He pointed out how, to me, Roman can't do no wrong. Okay. He called me on that one. Okay. I'm a huge Roman Reigns, Mark. I believe that. But I'm also a big Roman guy because guys hate him so much. I don't see the hate. So I, I, I tend to gravitate towards w the pluses for Roman more than the minuses. But I had to tell him. I don't have any God. This isn't the 90s. This isn't the 80s where I was a huge Dusty Rhodes fan. I was a huge HH Mark. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Macho Man, where I had guys that were truly, 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 you know, my Bret Hart's and my Shawn Michaels. I don't have that anymore. I have, I like them all. I don't have anybody that I hate other than woo, woo, woo. You know, you still suck, bro. Other than that, I mean, I don't have anybody that I do not like. So to me, they're all the same. So I like Randy Orton. I respect Randy Orton. I love Robert Roode. I liked him since he was, you know, the, when he was in, in TNA with, with Team Canada. And I'm glad to finally see him here. Too late, in my opinion, but he's still here. But Randy Orton deserved this win. He spent 17 years in the company. 17 years in the company. So, so he, and I have people saying, well, he doesn't deserve to have it. Everybody shouldn't be a Grand, Champ, Champ, a Grand Slam champion. Why? Why not? Why not somebody that likes a Randy Orton? He's had every title but this title. And I know you're saying, but well, it kills it kills Robert Roode. How did it kill Robert Roode? He lost to Randy Orton. He didn't lose to freaking um, Jinder Mahal. He didn't, and I know they're trying to build Jinder Mahal. No disrespect to Jinder Mahal, but he didn't lose to Jinder Mahal. He didn't lose to Brazongo. Okay, he lost to Randy Orton. And how about this, people? That he gets a rematch clause. And it's going to be at WrestleMania. And this match is pretty good. And I can imagine even being even better with the interests at WrestleMania. And we'll talk about WrestleMania also momentarily about where I think WrestleMania is going to go. But I'm okay with this happening because some guys are better at chasing the title and some guys are better at being the champion. And I believe, in my humble opinion, that Randy Orton is a better champion than he is a person who is chasing a championship. That is my belief. That's what I'm going to continue to remain to believe. But this match, it, it, it lacked something. I don't know what it was, but, you know, about a C. I will give it about a C in that match. Then, like I said, we had the friends backstage, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the locker room. Um, talking about him turning on him at, on SmackDown on Tuesday. Zayn and Mitch, that, you know, he reassured his best friend that, look, we're good. I'm in your corner. It's me and you. Yeah, right. Okay, it's professional wrestling. We know what's going to happen there. Um, then we go to the Natalya Carmella match versus Becky Lynch and Naomi via pinfall. This was a squash match. It was a match that was put in last moment. As I told you guys, you know, uh, no disrespect to the talent. I didn't fall asleep on them. I just fell asleep at that moment in the match. And, to, and actually, I started dozing off towards the end of the Randy Orton that match. So maybe that's why I gave it a C. It, it, when you see these two guys on paper, Robert Roode and Randy Orton, you think it's going to be an awesome match. And, it, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe those guys phoned it in. They did a Jennifer Lawrence, and they just got a paycheck and didn't really give it their all, knowing they're going towards WrestleMania and what I believe. I didn't let you count the back. What I believe is going to happen at WrestleMania. So on that match, I can't really give a grade for that match. But I did wake up for the Usos versus the New Day match. And this is where I'm a little mad. Okay, just a little bit. Right? Because I do believe wrestling is storyline. I, I, I've invented that hashtag, wrestling is storyline. I've also invented the hashtag, uh, or oh, not the hashtag, but the, the moniker when you listen to Perfect Plex Talk Radio. And I believe this for myself and other wrestling fans that are out there. And, and if you listen to this and everything I've ever do, it's the show for the intelligent wrestling fan, not the smart mark, because everybody has internet today. Everybody can make a smart opinion. But I think some people let their emotions of being a fan overcloud them knowing what a story is. I, um, I'm not, ooh, excuse me. I'm not, a, I'm not that, you know, there's things I follow on the internet. There's things that I listen to, there's things that I don't listen to. I, I, I came across a um, Russell Talk video about um, WWE, you know, should you be mad at their booking? Because you, is it, are they predictable was the title? And it's a story. And he made a point in there saying, you go see these movies, you know how it's going to end, but no one complains. No one, you knew that Iron Man was going to end up fighting Captain America in the end of the Civil War. 
but it was okay. It was great how he built it. You got there. You knew it was going to happen. Okay. And I brought that point up to say that this match ends in a no contest. They built this. They built this. They built this to give us a story. One more time between the New Day and the, the Usos. Usos never make it to WrestleMania. But then every single time they've done this, twice, because they built it on two promos, on two different shows, they were interrupted by the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, I didn't think they would get involved in this match, and that's why I thought it was kind of good, right? Because I didn't see them interrupting the match happening. I actually thought we would get a clear-cut winner. And if you saw that, hey, kudos for you. But the Bludgeon Brothers interrupt the match, and I'm saying, if you're a fan of the movie Boys in the Hood, do you want to see a dead body? Because there were five dead bodies that the Bludgeon Brothers left along ringside, the Usos and the New Day. Again, leading me towards my WrestleMania point about where WrestleMania is going to go. Talk about that moment here. Let's go ahead and get through the rest of these, these matches. Then we had the women's championship match. And this is where it got good, guys, because this is what we wanted to see. Charlotte defeats Ruby Riot via submission. And I'm out immediately comes Asuka. And I have been calling if I could not get Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte because I thought the marquee would be the biggest thing ever and that Ronda Rousey, if she was prepared and ready against Charlotte, maybe next year. We don't know. We don't. Everybody rips Ronda, but we don't know what Ronda can do. Look how fast Kurt turned it around and got into the wrestling business that you could believe. Look how fast Ken Shamrock did it and you could believe him. So maybe Ronda next year could be there. And I thought that would be that could mean event WrestleMania, Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. But we're going to get Oscar. Versus Charlotte Flair. And guys, the smile on my face can only be imitated by my wife coming out the shower butt ass naked because I cannot wait to see this match. I have waited to see this match between Asuka and Charlotte Flair. WrestleMania will be awesome. Awesome. That match right there can, you talk about nakamura and perhaps aj styles i'll give you that in a second okay aj styles won right you talking about that match still on the show could oscar and charlotte still the show comment below with jeremy john for saying let me know what you think about that and those two having a possibility of stealing stealing that match but then the six-pack challenge match happened and this is where i say people woo 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 what a six-pack challenge match, y'all. I'm sorry. Every time you complain and bitch on the internet, which I'm on the internet, but I don't bitch about it, it they surprise you. They surprise you, okay? What a main event last night. Winner being AJ Styles with a phenomenal forearm out of nowhere to pin Kevin Owens. But people, John Cena in this match, phenomenal. The, the, the storylines that are being told in this match. Sami Zayn's going to lay down for Kevin Owens and rolls him up in a pack and a small package. Awesome. My guy. All right, because I've been a fan since day one. And all of you, get my finger there closer, all of you hate on Baron Corbin. Y'all better start respecting that, man. Y'all better start respecting the Corbin. Start respecting Baron Corbin, y'all. Respect that man, okay? Baron Corbin is a hill. There's not many real, true heels in wrestling okay braun Strowman's a heel okay the, the crowd tried to make him a baby face but he's a heel i don't want to hear that he always sponsors to the crowd because big show did it Ugh. the great colleague did it that's what big giant heels do they 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 throw up their monsterness okay but they're heels kevin owens is a true heel the miz is a true heel baron corbin is a true heel Absolutely phenomenal, Baron Corbin, your performance in that. Kudos, brother. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, you get the golf clap, the Dumbledore, if you will, the Dumbledore clap for, uh, for, for Baron Corbin in that match, okay? Dolph Ziggler in this match. Well, we're talking about Dolph Ziggler. We know Dolph Ziggler's going to be great in this match. Shane McMahon at ringside, he gets super kicked by Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens could have won the title, and then Shane McMahon pulls him out. And then Sami Zayn was going to win the title. And then Shane McMahon pulls him out. Where was this man? Can somebody tell me? My eyebrows are on the line, people. I guarantee you that he would wrestle at WrestleMania. And I haven't seen him in two weeks. My eyebrows are on the line. My 
wife says, baby, you're too old. If you cut your eyebrows, they may not grow back. But that's okay! Because I believe in Daniel Bryan. I believe that the company's not too stupid to let him walk and go wrestle somewhere else. Where was Daniel Bryan at last night? He better show up Tuesday, people. He better show up Tuesday. Or I'm going to ask my fans to let me off the hook so I don't have to bet my eyebrows. But back to this match, okay? Won by AJ Styles. The storylines that were told in this main event were phenomenal, pun intended, okay? AJ Styles wins the match. And then we got Nakamura versus AJ Styles, the match we've been waiting to see. John Cena still doesn't have a match, but duh, we know why he doesn't have a match yet because he's going to fight The Undertaker. Don't care if you don't want to see it. Hell, I don't want to see it. But when I see it, we're going to mark out because it's Undertaker. And this time he will win and ride off into the sunset. And as my man said yesterday, when can the WWE fans and the WWE just let the man literally rest in peace? Okay? Let the man rest in peace. But he's going to get one more match, Cena versus him. We're going to get AJ, perhaps. I mean, uh, we're going to get AJ and Nakamura. But perhaps we might get Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, perhaps. Maybe, can he please be in a match, please? My eyebrows are on the line, okay? You know, I'm not big. I'm not going to say, man, he rest in peace, 21 years gone, never forgotten. I'm not going to say black nasty, but I'm going to use the line from Kurt Angle. Got a hot wife, no need to be a pimp, but my one only truly features in my body is my eyes. If my eyebrows go, that's part of my eyes because they're my eyebrows. Don't want to cut them. Can't cut them. But overall, guys, this pay-per-view, <laughs> what's going on, Vic? This pay-per-view was, I, I loved it. And yes, uh, Minister Jed, it was a great show. And uh, listen, I don't see any complaints about this pay-per-view, okay? It, it was not bad. It wasn't the greatest pay-per-view, but man, it, it, it was entertaining, it was exciting. That six-pack challenge match gave you stories to come out of there with. So now we got to look forward to Raw. Will Undertaker come out? What will John Cena say? We know he's going to say something. So let's find out what happens with that. I think we get that tonight, some glimpse of the Undertaker because, you know, and it's funny. I think I, I don't know where I read it from, but I saw somewhere on the Internet. It said, does, does, every, does everybody, everybody else knows that John Cena has a WrestleMania opponent, but John Cena, he's selling it that good. I like it. See, that's, see, that's what I'm saying when I say wrestling fans. Right, because Dice Man gets something about you always complain about wrestling fan, but you're a wrestling fan. I watch it differently. I approach it differently. I am a broadcast journalist, so I try to take my fandom out of it. Yes, I know sometimes I get back in, I get emotional when it comes to like the guys I do like, like a, a like a uh, Roman Reigns, but I do step out of it. Like so, that's that's you being a fan taking away your fandom. Okay, I get your fan is short for fanatic, and we're all crazy about this thing called professional wrestling. But be a fan. Allow yourself to be entertained. So what? We know that he has a match and he doesn't know it. So what? That's the story that he's telling. That's the story. I don't, I, I don't understand this disconnect with wrestling fans forgetting the story about how – I don't want to hear the, the, the nonsense and, excuse me, mama, the bullshit about, well, I just watch wrestling for the wrestling. No wrestler that you love will tell you it's all about just the squared circle. It's about the storyline that goes inside the square circle so that the story can get finished in the square circle. It all goes together. It's like a total package, no Lex Luger, okay? Learn the sport, guys. You know the sport. Be intelligent to the sport of professional wrestling. It's wrestling entertainment. It's, you know, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. To me, it's both. They give me both. Last night, they gave me both. They gave me N squared circle storyline. They gave me storylines. They progressed. Here go fast lanes, and now we're off. We're on the yellow brick road to WrestleMania. And this brings me to my final point for this morning, guys. A few WrestleManias back. I'm not the biggest, um, like, I don't have the greatest memory of, of, of things. I can look things up. If you tell me what they are, I'll remember them. But I, I don't have the greatest memory. Charge it to my mind, not my heart. You know, back in the day, I smoked some funny cigarettes. Okay, I'm clear now. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Friday Night Lights. Okay, but whatever WrestleMania that was, can't remember. I know it was. I know that the, they had the. It, I know it had the four corners match with the McMahons. Okay, whatever WrestleMania that was. But this WrestleMania, we're going to get a bunch of triple threat matches. So you're going to get the U.S. title, 
It's not going to be Robert Roode and, and Randy Orton one-on-one. They're going to insert Jinder Mahal, in my opinion. That's what's going to happen. That's going to be a triple threat. Then we have the triple threat for the Intercontinental title. Then the tag team title on SmackDown will be a triple threat match. You're going to insert the Bludgeon Brothers in that match against the Usos and the New Day. I just don't want to see the Bludgeon Brothers win that match at WrestleMania because I think the Usos deserve to have their WrestleMania moment. They can win it afterwards. Hell, they can win it the next night on Raw Go Home Show. I don't give a two tears in a bucket. Okay, but the Usos need to win at WrestleMania. But that would be a triple threat match. Okay, um, so you're going to get a bunch of triple threat matches. Okay, and then all this complaining about what we're hearing about this Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Guess what, guys? Again, the company's big. They, they I, I think sometimes they will make up for the bad booking that they do do. And I'm not trying to sit here and drink the Kool Aid. Hold on, I'll drink some water to that, though. Spring water. Got to drink that spring water a little healthier for you. you drink about a half a gallon to a gallon a day. Um, they, they, when they make up bad booking, because I don't listen again, knowing the company, they're promoting Andre the Giants documentary that's coming to HBO. They're going to put you can't just continue to have a battle royal with guys that no one really cares about. But if you throw in a bunch of guys that you do care about, whether you want to see them at a battle royal or not. It, it, it draws interest, maybe not from the diehard fan, but it draws enough interest for you to to watch it and to see what's going on in that match and can dive into that match because you might get a Goldberg, you might get a Samoa Joe, you might get a Kevin Owens, you might, you know what I'm saying? And no, I don't want to see those guys there, but that's what they're going to be. So I'm going to, I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. Hey, it's, it's what it is. But I also say this much, despite the bad booking that they've done on SmackDown, and I can agree to that, okay? Because they, this is why I'm, I'm still holding firm for Daniel Bryan because they've built since SummerSlam just one storyline, Daniel Bryan versus Shane. So it has to have some kind of payoff. If it doesn't, it's something we can say, but they they effed up, right? And you're going to hear some you effed up chants, right? But that's all you can get. So there's no time. I mean, there's still a lot of month left. What are you going to do with these guys? You got Samoa Joe coming back. What are you going to do with them? Where's he going to go? Braun Strowman still doesn't have a match. Where are you going to go? I know you don't want to see him in the Battle Royal. I don't want to see him in the Battle Royal. But what are you going to do with them, right? You're going to make shift a tag team and put Braun and, and, and walk with Elias? That's WWE, walk with Elias, not Royal Wrestling Entertainment. It's walk with Elias. If you're not walking with the lost love child of the Macho Man Randy Savage, Elias, you're missing the point. Okay, against the bar, you know whatever you do. I don't. Here's the thing, guys. WrestleMania, no matter what, every year is going to sell out or come close to a sellout. You're going to have people complain that they didn't sell out, but it's still seventy something thousand fans there. I don't get it. Developing no stories. You're right. SmackDown hasn't done that, and that's been the problem with SmackDown. So that's why I still have to hold out hope that they're going to get Daniel Bryan in there somewhere. They built just. Very few storylines there to have progression. Raw's done a good job lately. It's not too late, okay? There's still three shows, four shows before WrestleMania. There's still time to put something together. Will they put something together? That is the case. Listen, guys, I'm going to get out of here this morning. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Oh, develop new storylines. Yeah, there's there's time for it. Um, I thank you guys for tuning in. Please, guys, share this, like this, comment on um, what you thought. Uh, my opinion about Fast Lanes, it was a very Good show. Not bad, okay, but good. I'm going to go ahead and give it 3.75 rated R superstar titles, edge title runs. It, it was it was different. It threw me off. It was funny. You know, I, I thought the pay-per-view was better than advertised, and I thought that people that complained about it had nothing else to complain about because I thought if you watched this pay-per-view, then you understood where it went, and I think they made up for a lot of the non-storylines that they added to the program. So for me, 3.75 out of 5 rated R Superstar Edge title runs. So what did you think? What was your grade about it? Comment below, as Jamie Johns would say. Let me know. Today, 530-347-637-3859. I repeat that. Today, 5 o'clock, 347-637-3859. Call. Listen in. Okay? Go to your website, uh, Fox Sports Radio, 1340am.com. Go to Blog Talk Radio dot com slash t h a game v one vicky guerrero will be joining the program today listen guys told you before it's been nine years looked over the weekend we are 97 episodes away from 2000 97 episodes away from 2000 put that in your pipe and smoke listen guys around the blocks with mike knox it's been great fast lanes but did you think wasn't so bad peace